today I'm going to give you my top traveling tips for traveling to Cabo and tell you a little bit about my recent experience. I'll also be speaking about the resort I stayed at the Marquise in detail at the end of the video. Go ahead and hit the like button and leave me a comment below telling me your favorite thing to do in Cabo. Due to the uncertainty surrounding travel at the moment, I think it is very beneficial to have access to airport lounges in the event that you have a flight cancellation or a flight delay. Consider signing up for an American Express card to gain access to the airport lounges. This card also has a ton of other perks that we won't get into today, but if you would like to know more, please leave me a question in the comments. One thing I also wish I would have done is bring a pen to the airport, which was needed to fill out custom forms and COVID-19 forms. Let's talk about transportation. Consider booking a private transfer from the airport to your hotel to maximize time spent on vacation and avoid multiple stops along the way at other hotels, which you would encounter with a shared shuttle. On our trip, we used TransCabo, and in our opinion, it was money well spent. As far as getting around town once you have arrived at your hotel, I would highly recommend using Uber over a taxi service. Ubers are typically no more than five to seven minutes away and will cost you one third of the price. Getting a rental car is always an option, but we did not do this on our trip. Masks are still required in the airport and airplanes, regardless of vaccination status. As of right now, if you are currently in the US, you will need a negative COVID-19 test within 72 hours of departing Mexico and returning back to the US. Many resorts will offer testing on site. At our resort, the Marquise, it was $50 per person. Los Cabos is very dry and warm for most of the year. April and May are the driest months with almost no rain at all. On average, it rains 14 days per year in Cabo. Most of the rain is in August and September. We traveled in mid-August and we were lucky enough to catch two of those 14 days due to a tropical storm off the coast. Be prepared in case you happen to have a rainy day. Some ideas for rainy day activities are the local mall, downtown shopping as long as there's no flooding, booking a facial and massage at your hotel, and ATV rentals. A lot of people are traveling with fire sticks these days to bring the comforts of home with them on vacation. We wish we would have brought ours due to the limited viewing options on most resort TVs. And what kind of vacation would it be if you didn't book an excursion? We went on two different excursions on a recent trip to Cabo. The first one was a catamaran snorkel tour with Echo Cat that included an open bar and lunch. However, after the heavy rain, the captain wouldn't allow swimming due to water safety concerns. Despite not being able to snorkel, we had incredible views of the arches, the marina, and a wonderful lunch and open bar. The crew was very attentive and always willing to help you get that iconic picture in front of the arches. Our next excursion was an ATV tour which we booked through Amigos. They will provide a shuttle that picks you up from your hotel and takes you out to their property which is located about 25 minutes from the marina. Julio was our guide and he takes great pictures. He even specializes in panoramics. We had incredible views of the beaches on the Pacific side, ocean cliffs and canyons. If you have never rode an ATV before, don't worry, they happily walk you through everything. Another tip I would like to give you is to bring plenty of cash. We found that the US dollar was widely accepted. We actually did not use any pesos on our trip. When we did use our credit cards, there was an additional 3-5% to surcharge. Remember, the Mexican service industry relies heavily on tips. Cash tips can go very fast. Don't forget to tip your drivers, your guides, housekeepers, and waiters and waitresses, even if you're staying at an all-inclusive. Another benefit of having cash is the ability to barter with vendors on the beach to get better deals and save on taxes. Even when staying at an all-inclusive resort, don't forget to sample some of the amazing local cuisine. One of our favorite dinners was at a restaurant called The Ledge at the Cape Hotel. Be sure to make a reservation prior to your arrival. If you arrive prior to your reservation, check out the Sunken Bar. You will find an array of drinks made by professional mixologists. We loved the drinks called the Cape and the Smoking Watermelon. At The Ledge, we tried the Pork Belly Tostada, the ledge burger with parmesan truffle fries, and the beef short ribs. While everything was great, the short ribs were our favorite. Our next meal was at El Farion and it was unforgettable. It is tucked into the cliffside of the Waldorf Astoria Los Cabos Pedregal and overlooks the Pacific Ocean. The power of the waves on the Pacific side is incredible. 
They also have a champagne terrace where they offer tastings. The restaurant has a rotating menu where they have a variety of fresh caught fish and a steak option. It's a four course meal, soup, appetizer, your main dish with two sides and dessert. We tried the red snapper and sea bass and had fresh made churros for dessert. The service and atmosphere at the restaurant was like nothing else we've ever experienced. After extensive research, we decided to stay at the Marquise. The Marquise is located on the corridor between Cabo San Lucas and San Jose. It is an all-inclusive, adults-only resort and every room has an ocean view. Although the Marquise does not have a swimmable beach like most resorts in Cabo, it makes up for it with its incredible infinity pools. There are four restaurants and a cafe. The first one is Canto del Mar, a French restaurant. The second is Vista Belenas, which has a daily breakfast buffet and Mexican food for dinner. The third one is Pergola, and that's where you can get your pizza and Italian food. And the fourth one is Sake, which has a Japanese steakhouse feel with food prepared directly in front of you. We tried them all and all had excellent options to choose from, but we found ourselves coming back to Sake multiple times for their sushi and spring rolls. If you wanted to spend your whole vacation at the Marquise, you could with its abundance of daily activities and nightly entertainment. Our favorite activities were ping pong, pool volleyball, and the live musical performances at night. Make sure to check out the coffee shop. Not only do they have coffee, but they also offer an assortment of pastries, ice creams, and deli sandwiches. We love the vibe, the ambiance, and the architecture around the resort. We would not hesitate to book another trip at the Marquise. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end of the video and would like to see more content, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.